what is conditional probability? And here we have a typical example where we have two buckets and they contain colored balls. And in bucket A, we can see down the column here, each of the different colors, and we know there's a total of 100. Bucket B has 1,000. We might ask ourselves, if we were to choose a bucket at random, let's say with 50% chance, and then pick a ball out of that bucket, what's the probability that we get a yellow ball, for example? And if we look at this table, you might be tempted to think, well, there's a total of 91 yellow balls, there's an overall total of 1,100, so you might be tempted to think the overall probability of getting a yellow ball is 91 out of 1,100. And if you do that, then you'd be being tricked because you wouldn't be taking into account the conditional nature of having had first to pick a bucket. And let's look at that more closely. If we look at that more closely, if we only had bucket A, for example, then the chance of getting a yellow ball is 90 out of 100. If we only had bucket B, it's a much smaller chance of 1 out of 1,000. So now when we think about the probability overall of getting yellow, well, half the time we're going to get 1 with a chance of 9 out of 10. The other half we're going to only get 1 with a 1 out of 1,000. So overall, if you took the, uh, you know, we're thinking intuitively, you think the average of the two, it might be something around 45%. And that would be closer to the right answer. So let's actually work it out exactly and see how we do that with conditional probability. So here's the definition of conditional probability. It's the probability that event A happens given that event B happens. That's what this notation means. And it's defined as being the probability that they both happen, the intersection, divided by the probability that event B happens. Now, I don't find this to be particularly intuitive. I prefer to rearrange it. And if you rearrange it like this, uh, simply multiply both sides by PB, then you can see something more intuitive, I think. The probability that they both happen equals the probability that B happens times the extra probability that A happens given that you know B happens. So this takes into account the randomness in B, and this takes into account the extra randomness in A conditioned on knowing that B has happened. I find that to be more intuitive. And here's another expression, which I also find to be quite intuitive, although it, of course it can be derived exactly. And that is that if you're interested in the probability of something happening, then you can work that out by looking at the conditional probability of it happening, conditioned on something else, and then doing that for all of the other things that could happen. So for example here, uh, probability of X happening equals the probability of X conditioned on A happening times the probability that A does happen, plus the probability of X conditioned on B happening times the probability that B happens, plus you've got to add up all the other terms that could possibly happen. And there'll be exactly the same expressions like this for all the terms that could happen. And if you do this for all the things that could possibly happen, then you'll get the overall probability for X. So I won't derive this, but let's see it in action and hopefully it gives again more intuition into this important expression. So let's return to our probability here of probability of picking a yellow ball. Well, it's either gonna have come from bucket A or bucket B, so we can apply this equation directly now. So here's the probability of Y for yellow, B equals the probability of yellow conditioned on bucket A times the probability of bucket A, plus the probability of yellow conditioned on B times the probability of bucket B. And we know these terms now because as we said before, if you only had bucket A, then you know you get a yellow nine out of 10 times, 90 out of 100. If you only, and that's this expression here. If you only had bucket B, so you're told it's conditional bucket B, then you get a yellow one out of 1,000. And these expressions here, probability of A, probability of B, well, that's the chance of choosing those ones. We said that's a half. So we can fill in these numbers here directly from the table, going down the column, and then we can see that this expression equals 0 0.4505. And that is, of course, almost 45%. As we said, roughly speaking, intuitively, we thought it might be 45%, not 91 out of 1,100. Let's look at another question, for example, which often is uh, confusing to people, which is where we ask the question uh, about the input and ask the probabilities of that. So let's say, for example, this experiment had happened in a different room that you weren't in. You couldn't see which bucket was chosen. 
but someone else does the experiment and then they tell you that a green ball was chosen. So let's say they say uh, to you that they've chosen the green ball, they know it's a green ball, and they're asking you, what is the probability that we picked bucket B when we did the experiment in that room? So here we have, we write this down here as a formal statement like this, is the probability that bucket B was the one that was chosen, given that we've seen that a green ball came out. Now again, if we look at this table up here, we might think that there's 99, we look along the green line because we're told it's green, we might think, well, uh, the chance of it being bucket B is 99 out of 104. And that looks to be something which intuitively you might think is the answer to this question. Again, if you did that, you'd be being tricked. So let's use these formulas to help us. So we didn't just uh, directly apply this formula up here to get that the, this expression here. And now we have a numerator, the intersection. How do we calculate that? And a denominator, how do we calculate this? This is something that can be confusing to people because you're asking the probability of it being green. Uh, and over on the left-hand side, you're told that it's green. So that's an interesting thing that can be confusing. So actually, the, the answer to that is, well, you're only told that it's green within this probability calculation here. To evaluate that, you need these other probabilities. And this other one here is the overall probability that it's green. Uh, so let's work that out. How do we work that out? Well, we just worked out the probability, the overall probability that it's yellow. So we can do the same thing for green just by doing exactly this expression, replacing the y's by g. So we know how to work out the denominator. What about the numerator? Well, the, we've got an expression for the intersection over here, and we can just apply that directly. If we apply, apply it one way, we'll actually go back to this expression here. So we need to apply it the other way. So instead of conditioning on the green, we now need to condition on the ball, uh, the bucket being bucket B. So again, we can do this here, uh, apply this directly. We just replace the A by the G, and we can see this expression here on the numerator. So the probability of green given bucket B times the probability of bucket B, just using that expression there. The denominator, as we said, it's exactly the same as doing this one here. So we know how to calculate all of these terms now, and we can put those expressions in, and we get 0 0.664 for this probability. Again, this is not the same as 99 divided by 104. Does it make sense intuitively? Well, let's look and think. When we look in more detail at this, uh, at this table and think exactly about what's going on, well, if it had been bucket A, then you would have got green 5% of the time. If it had been bucket B, you would have got green roughly 10% of the time, 99 out of 1,000, roughly 10%. So if it was bucket A, it would be 5%, bucket B, 10%. That's a two to one ratio there. So it's a two thirds, one third. And we can see down here exactly 0.664 is, and it's not exactly that because it's 99. So 0.664 is almost the two thirds that we would expect because this was twice the chance. From bucket B, there's twice the chance of getting a green compared to bucket A. So it's a two third, one third ratio. And that makes sense. So if this video has helped you to understand conditional probability, uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Uh, of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the description below where there's a web page which has a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.